Speaker, members of the House, I appreciate you giving me this opportunity to come before you and to explain something that we've introduced in this session to begin a study process, hopefully for the 1991 session of the General Assembly. I've introduced House Bill No. 2087 to serve as a study vehicle this summer concerning the facilities needs for the most economically stressed counties in the state of Georgia. During the interim, the bill has been assigned to the State Planning and Community Affairs Committee. And Chairman Lane, as well as Representative Royal, myself and some others are going to study the bill during the interim, and I'm going to ask for your input and your consideration during this time. This year, as a part of our growth strategies program, each community and county in the state of Georgia are going to study their facilities needs. However, it's possible that the most economically stressed counties in the state even this, this facility's need study may not be able to afford the facilities which this study says that they need. You know, many of these counties have undergone double-digit unemployment in the past few years. The families are caught in an endless, seemingly cycle of uh, poverty. Also, we have increasing crime. These people are trying to help themselves. We're going to need to assist them, I believe, at the state level. Provide jobs and economic opportunities. However, we've talked about a, a lot about the session about an even playing field. And to be able to compete on an even playing field, some of these communities are going to need some of the basic facilities to have competition in the marketplace to obtain these jobs for their citizens. We believe that if we invest in the state of Georgia in our rural economically stressed areas and provide these counties with the basic tools they need to grow economically, and contribute to the quality of lives of their citizens, that this in turn can be an investment we make to contribute to the economic plans concerning facilities for each of these communities under the growth strategies legislation will be used to study the facilities needs for these individually economically stressed rural counties, to create priorities among those needs and provide a vehicle by which the state can assist these economically stressed communities in providing these facilities for these citizens along the line similarly to what we did with the jobs tax credit bill last year. Uh, I came and brought this to your attention today because I hope that during the interim you'll have an opportunity to look at 2087, give us your input on how this legislation can be improved, and to work with us next year to perfect this legislation and help work for economic development equal opportunity and improved quality of lives for our rural citizens who need the assistance of this state. Mr. Speaker, I thank you for the opportunity and, and to the members to share this with you this afternoon. We hope to have your input and assistance during the year. Thank you. And uh, ask that a conference committee be appointed. Have we already disagreed? First time, this is second. Then it would not be ready for a conference committee. Gentleman from the second is supposed to move. The House disagrees to the Senate amendment to House Bill 1228. Is there objection? Chair is done, and the House has disagreed. Simpson. Chairman oh, right. Simpson. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that the House disagree that the Senate substitute to House Bill 1204. Registration and elections. <laughs>
Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, I rise in support of Senate Bill 489, which is a companion piece of legislation which our House uh, State Planning and Community Affairs Committee passed out on the 13th of February. This is permissive legislation that has the support of the Georgia Municipal Pool Association. Joe, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, General, this is permissive legislation which allows for an additional uh, member to be appointed to downtown development authorities, providing that they are either one, a taxpayer within the municipality, or number two, have a business, own a business within the municipality. In Brunswick, Georgia, for example, many of our uh, downtown merchants who, who have uh, been quite successful have ended up moving to St. Simons, where they reside, but their businesses are still downtown and the municipality is not able to call on them to serve on the Downtown Development Authority, this piece of legislation will allow them to do so. Appreciate your support. Thank you. restatement of our law on adoption. That also addressed the issue here. The problem is, because it was so comprehensive, we have a delayed effect of July 1. And that's so all of the courts and all the departments can get uh, prepared for the different forms that we're requiring. The problem we have, this bill, in my earlier House Bill 1409, and this Senate bill that we're addressing today, addresses one problem, and that's the Supreme Court's decision last December, Thorn versus Padgett, which struck the only means by which we can conduct step-parent adoptions in this state. With the delayed effect of the bill we passed yesterday, we're going to have another several months that step-parent adoptions cannot take place in Georgia. Many have been filed, many are being filed by attorneys that uh, have not heard that uh, the statute has been struck. This addresses that one narrow problem. You'll see a uh, floor amendment on your desk that I offer that uh, makes this act that you're considering right now effective upon the approval of the governor. It also addresses all actions filed on or after the effective date of this act and all actions pending, and that's the important part. It'll address the hundreds of adoptions that are pending that unless we do something about this today, uh, we'll have to wait until mid-summer. Finally, this has a sunset provision that uh, states that this act will expire when the Comprehensive Act that we passed yesterday goes into effect. So uh, I hope that I explained it uh, completely, and I certainly would appreciate, and I know the Senate would appreciate your approval of this act. Thank you. Now you will turn energy on people on this side.
question is on motion to have a the House of Reds and Substitute House Bill 1640. All in favor, please rise, stand if you can. I wish I was up there. If you guys call for a vote, they vote yay or nay on these bills. So. <laughs> this is the House Senate Resolution 54 as it passed the Senate and adopted. Oh, yeah. Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, this is the mandate the authority has to come back to the General Assembly. And for any proceeds, it is ever so far least. Yeah, he'd be running for office in about 15 years. Reverse your position, please. He was standing a minute ago, wasn't he? Gentlemen, motion to hire the 99 and 80. Gentlemen, vote for the MC. Just lean forward, hold his hand. I'd like to see it. Chest up. All members, please take seats and seat over. All members except those standing on the line in line for a motion, please take seats. Whereas it is only fitting that as much celebrated occasion of attaining the age of 50 be appropriately recognized and congratulated. <laughs> now, therefore, be resolved by the House of Mm-hmm. 
As a lot of you all have probably heard from the constituents over the last couple of days, the Senate uh, amended uh, House Bill 1412 to include uh, primitive weapons and to open up the archery as well as the uh, gun season to primitive weapons. Uh, we have met, we have talked, we have prayed together, we have stayed together, and the Senate has agreed to just drop it. So what you'll be voting on is uh, 1412 and it's for original parts. And then on the motion, gentlemen, and fifties, that the House adopt the conference committee report on House Bill 1412. All those in favor, aye, stand, do count it, please.
Chair. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to see the members of the Industrial Relations Committee in this annual room over here right now for a very brief meeting. Further legislation? Yes, sir. We'd be, you we need to go, go somewhere where room. the press and the public can get in. Use a conference room in the speakers. I'll thank you, Mr. Speaker. I recognize the gentleman from 57, Mr. Mangum, on a point of personal privilege. All members, please take seats. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House. This is the first time since I've served in the Georgia House of Representatives I've taken the will on the point of personal privilege. As I look out from the well to all of my fellow legislators and friends, I'm reminded of an old Chinese proverb. We've come a million miles together. That's what I feel like with all of you. We have come a million miles together through good times. Times such as the time when we passed the Quality Basic Education Act without a negative vote. The times that we've shared in this house during the era of double-digit growth here. And seeing the beginning of the developmental highway system and the formation of the children and youth division, as well as the growth strategy. And through times that have been tough, times that have tested our strength and our friendship, in the 12 years that I have been in the legislature, it has always been with the greatest pride that in every situation we have always worked toward the greater good of the people of the state of Georgia. My area of responsibility has been in education. As a member of the Education Committee for 12 years and as the chairman for the past four years, education has been a top priority in this state and education of our young people has been a top priority with me. In all of this, I have stood for improving the educational system of Georgia. Because of the state of the system, this has required tough stands, but it has been evidenced by our many improvements, such as full day kindergarten, equity funding, where today we are spending over $100 million each year in equalized funds. Improving teacher quality, where just a few years ago we were spending $810,000 a year on staff and professional development. Now we are spending $24 million. And I would be remiss if I left the list of accomplishments without naming the Special Instructional Assistance Program which assists children in grades one and two who might have problems. These accomplishments are significant milestones along the journey to create the highest quality education system for our children. In a sense, this has been one of the greatest consumer efforts of the decade. The consumers being the children of Georgia and the beneficiaries being the economic and social well-being of the state of Georgia. That is why today I am declaring my candidacy for the Office of Commissioner of Insurance for the state of Georgia. I will bring the same qualities of tough stands, accountability and fair treatment to the insurance industry and its service to the people of this state. Just as in education, the people must have the highest quality with the lowest possible cost insurance coverage. Families and individuals must have this with today's economic conditions. There are many progressive ideas that need to be brought to this critical industry. It is my pledge to work with consumers and the industry to bring about these innovative changes.
There have, these have been the most rewarding years of my life. I will cherish the memories and the friendships forever. The nicest things are that the friendships will never end. I made the ultimate decision to do what I am doing, but I have been encouraged by many of you, over 40 of you, who have come to see me over the past few days. This encouragement has been my strength. So as I look out on this great assembly, I think we have come a million miles together. And in my serving the people of this state as insurance commissioner, I look forward to a million more with each of you. Thank you for the opportunity. Constituents with this 
Bible. This is the Bible. Or Brock on second. Do we agree? Still don't think it's Germain. If it's Germain, then I can put my judgment be on. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry that both of you got involved in that. You're both gentlemen and you're both better than somebody else. I lost my ticket. It happens, believe me. I believe very strongly in that old saying that the stick will hang out no tail on it. Well, I think we're going to have to have a little bit of 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 a Meet somewhere in the air room and shake hands and forget this business and get on with the business and hang. All right, Mr. Thompson, do you want to be recognized now? Sharon and I, gentlemen, join us, Mr. Thompson, on the point of personal privilege. Good speaker, ladies and gentlemen, house. It's not easy to follow two great orators as I'm happy to do today. But I want to tell you that I rise today with mixed feelings. As, uh, and what, some of what I've got to say will be already party of yours. A party that has been good to me and good to my county. This will also serve as my local announcement, so please bear with me. I've been fortunate to serve on some of the most active committees in this house. I've had the opportunity to serve as a standing subcommittee chairman on the couple.
try to leave his Fifth Amendment intact? I do not know what I'll do because I think that, in the, that this is a body of compromise and politics is a body of compromise. I don't think that it's politically smart for me to state what my position is right now. Well, I can I answer think that, that question for you, ma'am. The conference committee is where you have compromises between the two bodies and you, you try to do as much as you can to sustain All members vote. All
February the 8th, we passed in this house, House Bill 1216, which is part of the house uh, drug package, which was provided for a drug free zone around schools. And at that time, we discussed how that we appeared before our committee uh, on the day that we discussed House Bill 1216. Uh, and I said he didn't have any problem with us going to our bill, and then he, somebody over there did. He, babies around this state, particularly in the rural areas. This bill was first considered, uh, as my recollection best serves me, in the House Judiciary Committee late last week, and at that time there seemed to be those in attendance who had the desire to have some input into who the composition of the membership of the commission would be and other things about it. and the bill was suspended until this week, until Monday of this week, for consideration and for input by persons who may want to have something to say about how we ended up with the bill that would be presented. And the bill that comes before you today, including subparagraph one on page two, came from the input from those people. And since that time, some people have said, well, there's somebody that I don't like on that group that uh, may have some suggestive power to the governor about who he would appoint, and they've come along and said we ought to be included too. I submit to you that has no role to play. I submit to you that if those people had those concerns, that should have been done when the bill was being uh, marked up in the House Judiciary Committee. Groups of people. Every woman in this state might be capable of having a baby as a stake in this legislation. And everyone ought to be considered. My point is very simple. On section 2, subparagraph 1, the governor is going to appoint three female citizens from the whole nation. No groups ought to be represented here. Surely we have confidence in the governor making wise choices for all the women in the state of Georgia. And I'd like to have that available to them, although this, uh, the author of this bill will say that you can ignore the recommendations of these four groups. He only has to consider them. You and I know how this works. The bill is directly so ready in that direction. They, they don't legislate up here for groups of individuals with a vested interest in a settlement or a solution to piece of legislation. Every woman in Georgia is going to be affected by this and not have a right be at least in the pool of those who might be selected. My amendment will simply on page eight of um, line eight of page two will simply put a period of the word in industry and delete the rest of the language and give the government the latitude to pick three females as a Is there anyone else? Is any objection to previous question be adopted? Chair, none. Previous question is already covered. We're reading the first amendment. Representative Linder of the 44th District goes to Mid Senate Bill 553. As followed, I place the period after the word industry on page 2, line 8, and strike the remainder of the paragraph. Is there an objection to the There is an objection to the gentleman with no weapons on the gentleman say I. Yeah. 
in his daily occupation and duties at this great house of representatives. Father, we continue to ask that you would invoke your spirit upon us as you did in him, so that we may become through thee truly servants for all mankind. This is a prayer we ask in your son Christ Jesus' name forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. Brown. Margarita Captain, Senate Bill 534. Senate Bill 534, Senator Ray of the 19th, relating to the applicability of the Georgia Administrative Procedure Act to the rules and regulations of the Board of Natural Resources to amend Code Section 12-2-1 of the OCGA related to the Department of Natural Resources. But we had one little problem that came up after that, and that pending cases, there was not any provision for a notice to be given. <laughs> So, uh, Chairman Patton and I prepared a uh, amendment uh, that was placed on your desk, and then today we want to make sure that everybody understood that a notice would be given and how that notice was be, be given. Uh, it doesn't refer to jury trials, they have terminal score, but they have a motion that it goes to one at a minimum, even in the rural circuits in my district. Uh, they would simply have to. The judge had to do his job. He had to work. He had to set a date, but he does have an out here. Uh, during that 90 days, he set a date sort of beyond the 90 days so that everybody knows that something will be done. It's just linger and linger and linger. Some has to be done. The other thing, uh, is it true that uh, due to, in some courts, that the backlog is such that they sometimes cannot get to it within three months? Is that true? Or are you making it? I don't agree with that. You don't agree with that. Well, at least some, isn't it true that some of the judges, uh, some of the judges, some of the judges, some say that. Well, it's like you have a field now that the court will come. They do not hear that case that is too bad. The notice will have to be given to the court and to the petition of the 90 days, before the 90 days will be given to the court. Now, what is the present law on this? That's not bad. Well, the present law would be like any other case. There would not be a time period that would have to be done if the thing remained one. Okay, now, until the judge decides to do something. This says the judge needs to do something to overturn that decision. You're seeking to be fair to the pending cases that are out there, not to try to go to the Court of Appeals. This doesn't prevent you, it doesn't cut you out, it simply expedites the process. I took it, I read it. We have a land uh, uh, Northwest Cobb is being process being permitted right now. And uh, would this impact the procedure that's identified for that particular amendment? Well, I'm not fit with the circumstance, but what this, you know, this just says that uh, based on what the administrator's judgment is, if it's still beyond that dispute court, the judge has to do something. The judge can't just assist that. It doesn't say the judge does do something. I mean, if he elects not to act, then it moves it.
but it's got to make a suit. That's right. I mean, you shouldn't allow this to linger, linger, linger. It's going to be done. There's no new evidence to put in. It's going to make a decision or not make a decision. If no further questions have to be put into consideration, I represent the problem from the Senate had all the amendment on the floor uh, on another bill, another issue that we're not seeing the problem we didn't have any objections to the previous question. We have not the previous question. We didn't have any objections. Have they been traded? Are the signature of the government, Mr. Red, has Mr. Red taken days to let the signature of the government have been approved without the signature of the government? Thank you. 
I know you're talking about something serious, but you can smile when you're doing it.
I'm going to speak to Becky. It's in Boston, in Atlanta. Okay. Becky, how are you doing? I think it's, I mean, it's probably not, it, generally, it's probably even less leaving out of China. Oh, okay. Okay. Notice the job of uh, added congressional dinner. Uh, okay, I mean, but, but that's not in the 575. Okay. Okay. Don't go ahead and reserve the. Uh, I'm get say I'm gonna get my congressional dinner ticket separately. Okay. Is that okay? Okay. So I mean, I'm going, but I, I want to sit with y'all. So I mean, Reva or E B A. Rabbits are easy. I think I Yeah, I'm yeah, pretty sure I uh, uh, let, let me. I got your number now, so let me. It wasn't until next week, right there. I'm going to try to play something next week, okay, while I'm winning up. So, so, that sound good? Okay, I appreciate it. No, I will. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, let, me, let me give you that. They're filming a commercial as we speak. Yeah, can't play commercial. So. That's right. Okay. I appreciate you. Bye-bye now. Jack Parthane, please. Uh, Representative Poston down at the Capitol. <laughs> I wasn't expecting okay, it. I was in pretty tight. Again. That's fine. Go ahead. Jack, how are you doing? Well, I got some good news and some bad news. <laughs> I got... Uh, our bill that takes you out of the divorce business uh, out of the House so unanimously uh, got it out of the Senate, but not before Don Peavy put a very controversial amendment on it, used it as a vehicle for something that he could not get out of House Judiciary. So I've got uh, Denmark Groover and, and the, the Speaker, you know, are you going to insist on your position? If you know Don Peavy or know anybody who does, maybe the district attorney from from Gwinnett County. It's like a, a three page, it's not even germane. It's about, uh, I don't think, it's, it is a divorce issue, but it's about, uh, um, what, what is the word I'm trying to find? Turn around this way a little while you're talking. There it's you go. a uh, mediation between divorcing parties, you know, of, of, of requiring counties to set up a program where couples going through a divorce go through a mediation process short of court. Naturally, you know, it's kind of such a bold departure from present law. It's, it's something that, that he's been trying to get through House Judiciary and it, they haven't, so, you know, they haven't bought the, the bill of goods there. So so he, uh, he amended my little bill with it. So there's where we are now. Just uh, whenever you're comfortable. Yeah. We'll probably do a few takes. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ron Fennell. As your state representative, I've worked very hard on the Sydney Lanier Bridge for.